There are about four things people do that blocks their angel or the ministry of angels in their lives. And as long as you are under the influence of my voice, I pray that you stop doing these four things that I'm going to share or rather talk to you about. I know that in today's church, ministers of the gospel, they talk more about prayer, anointing, giving, faith. And of course, there is nothing wrong with that. But all I'm saying is we have very few ministers who talk about the importance of the ministry of angels in a believer's life. Believe it or not, there are two important things in our time, in our dispensation. Number one, the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number two, the ministry of angels. And allow me to quickly define or explain what an angel is, because there are so many explanations that surrounds the word angel. There are people who believe that angels are people who once lived and died, and as a result now, those people are watching over them, and they call that or those people angels, which is not true. The devil is a liar. There is nothing like that. But let's look at what the Bible says about angels or an angel. What is an angel? Let's break it down. Hebrews 1 verse 14 declares that angels are ministering spirits sent by God to minister to those that have inherited salvation. Meaning, once one becomes a Christian, a born-again child of God, a believer, that person automatically, God releases angels to minister to that person. You don't have to apply for angels. You don't have to pray to God, release angels. No. The moment you say yes to Jesus, you are given angels. But before the angels that are assigned to you, because you are now born again, you have an angel. We call it your personal angel, your guardian angel. That one was given to you the day you were born. We see that in Matthew 18, verses 10, when Jesus was talking about the angels, the guardian angels of the little ones. We also see that in the book of Acts chapter 12, and you read verses 5 going down, when the church was praying for Peter, the time Peter was in prison. When Peter was released, because God released an angel, and the angel came, rescued Peter, and Peter went to where the prayer was, and he began to knock. And as they heard the knock, Rhoda went and told them that there is Peter at the door. They said, it must be his angel. It's not him. It must be his angel. That means the church that time understood not just the ministry of angels, but understood that every person has their own angel. Your angel looks like you, sounds like you. Not only that, in the book of Revelation, and you read verses 1 of chapter 1, an angel came with the revelation of Jesus to John, that John himself did not even realize that it was an angel. He thought it was Jesus. So Jesus has an angel that looks exactly like him, sounds exactly like him. Remember, John walked with Jesus, so he knew how Jesus' voice sounded like. So the ministry of angels is so important that from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, we see the patriarch walking with angels, moving with angels. We see the prophets moving and walking with angels, operating with angels. We see Jesus in his time. My goodness, let me go deeper there. Before Jesus was born, an angel was sent to announce his birth. When Jesus was now born, Herod is killing babies. An angel appears to the father and tells him what to do, and they went to Egypt. When Herod died, the angel appeared to the father while he's now he was in Egypt and told him Herod has died, go back. 
Jesus now, he is a grown man. He's fasting. We know the story. 40 days, 40 nights. And as soon as the devil was rebuked by him and left him, the Bible says in Matthew 4 verse 11, angels appeared and ministered unto him. This is Jesus we are talking about. Imagine he's full of the Holy Spirit. We saw that in Matthew 3 when he was baptized. The Holy Spirit came on him, came upon him. Heaven opened, a voice spoke, but he still allowed angels to minister to him. Meaning Jesus understood something that believers of our time don't understand and it breaks my heart. Because there are certain things that will never happen. There are certain portals that you will never fathom. Certain mysteries, certain realms that you will never fathom until you fully understand the ministry of angels. So Jesus moves out of the wilderness, being ministered unto, not by prophets or anything like that, angels. Jesus later on, he's praying in the book of Luke chapter 24, you read verse 42 going down to 44. The Bible says, for he was weak. And an angel from heaven appeared to strengthen him. I don't know if you guys are getting this. Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit. The Bible declares in the book of Acts chapter 10 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Jesus had the Holy Ghost. But when he was weak, an angel appeared to strengthen Jesus. Imagine, full of the Holy Spirit. So you see when I say two things are important, the Holy Spirit and the ministry of angels. And the angel strengthened Jesus. That even when he was now arrested, he says a statement that baffles my mind. He says, if I wanted... I will call unto my father, and he will release angels to fight for me. You see how important the ministry of angels is? Now he died. The women who were going to his grave, they said, who will roll the stone for us? And when they got there, the stone was already rolled. And the Bible declares one of the angels was sitting on top of the stone because there were two angels that had rolled the stone. So Jesus in his birth, or rather before he was born, we see an angel. In his life, we see angels. When he dies, we see angels. Even when he resurrects, we see angels. In his coming, he shall come with angels. You see how important that is? You see, the day you were born, an angel was given to you. The day you die, an angel comes to take your spirit. We see that in Luke chapter 16, you read verse 22 going down. The Bible there introduces us to the story of the rich, uh, rich man and the poor Lazarus, where when the poor Lazarus died, an angel came, carried his spirit to the bosom of Abraham. So imagine the day you are born, an angel is released. The day you die, an angel is released. What more about your life? There are certain things that people miss because they are failing to understand how important the ministry of angels is in their lives. Angels are so much real that you don't have to see them to know that they're real. You don't have to see oxygen to know that there is oxygen. And most of Christians or believers or people believe in the existence of Jesus, not because they saw Jesus face to face, but they believe. I'm trying to say to you, you don't have to see them to believe that they're there. You need to believe that they're there because the Bible tells you so. Of course, I've seen angels so many times in my life. And not only me, my children see angels. My wife see angels. People around me see angels. So I, I did not have to see them to believe that they are angels. I knew as soon as I read my Bible. So angels appear at will, and they disappear at will. But one can channel their spirit into seeing them. And the opposite is true. One can do certain things unaware to block them. Because angels, every time God answers you, he answers you through the ministry of angels. Let me break that one down. I'm, I'm about to like what I'm about to say. 
Prayer is important, but there is no prayer without the ministry of angels. Because when I pray to God and God answers me, he answers me through an angel. Hence, angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to us. So they minister to us and for us. Remember that. So whenever I talk to God, it's not God moving around, protecting me, fighting evil spirits on my behalf, principalities. No. God is too big. He sits alone in the circumference of himself. He is the centerpiece of civilization. He is the uncreated creator of the universe. He always was, always is, and forever he will be unmoved, unchanged, undismayed, undefeated. He is the only one who was and who is to come. He does not have a successor. He does not have a predecessor. He is august. He is unique. He's unparalleled. You can command him. So when we talk about a Christian being heavily defended, we're talking about a Christian being protected by angels. So angels, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, read the book of Daniel, chapter 10. It will make more sense to you. That's why when Peter was in prison, it was an angel that came down and rescued him. When Jesus himself was in trouble, he said, I will call unto the Father. Not he will come down. He will release angels. You see what I'm talking about? So every time God wants to answer us, he answers us through the ministry of angels. And that's because God has a system. So these divine, majestic, heavenly beings want to be seen. It's not like they are refusing to be seen. No, they want to be seen because that is their duty, is to minister. Their duty is to minister to us. I couldn't wait to get here. So let's talk about the four things people do that blocks their angel or the ministry of angels in their lives. Number one, failing to recognize the presence of angels in your life will cause you unaware to block your angel. The moment you acknowledge the ministry of angels, angels will start appearing and angels will start moving through you, with you, for you. But not acknowledging their presence is actually rejecting their ministry. I will give an example, and I pray you understand it. Just like a gift, just because one has a gift, one is gifted, it does not mean the gift is going to operate itself through that person. Because if you don't recognize that gift, then the gift becomes inoperational, not because the gift is not there, but because you are not recognizing the gift. So the gift does not force itself out of you. Angels don't do because they want to do. They don't move in your life because they want to move. They don't do things on your behalf because they want to. No, no, no. They are ministering spirits. So one has to acknowledge their presence. And as soon as you acknowledge their presence, guess what? Scales will start falling off your eyes. But as long as you're not recognizing their presence in your life, you are blocking them. And not just angels in this case, but your angel. The moment you start recognizing the presence of your angel, trust you me, you begin to move and see, not just move, and see your angel. In most cases, you might see it in an open vision. You might see your angel in a dream. You might see your angel even in a mental impression form, so to say, where uh, this is what we call prophetic impression, so to say, where the visions of your mind and you're seated like that and through internal vision of the mind, you are able to see your angel. You can literally see your angel in another location. Angels are as real as they come. Number two, praying to an angel. I know that sounds crazy. And it sounds like, what? Praying to an angel blocks the ministry of angels in one's life. And that is because 
we don't pray to angels. We don't worship angels. We don't cry and ask angels for favors. It doesn't work like that. So the more you pray to an angel, the more one blocks their angel. When you read the Bible in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, you see John bowing down to an angel. And the angel said, wait a minute. You cannot do that. I'm your fellow servant. I'm your compatriot. Stand up. You can't bow down to me and worship me. Worship God alone. And the angel went as far as saying that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy in verse 10 of Revelation chapter 19. Why would John, who walked with Jesus, bow to an angel? It's because John thought that the angel was actually Jesus. And how do I know that? Because in Revelation chapter 1, when the angel is described, the angel is described as Jesus, so to say. And he thought it was Jesus. Yet when you read verses 1 of Revelation chapter 1, it actually tells us that the, the revelation was given through an angel. One will say, but if he wrote Revelation, how come he did not know that was an angel? It's like saying, if Job wrote the book of Job, how come he did not know God was testing him? It's because when it was happening, he had not yet started writing. So he had to write, or rather he started writing after it had happened. So he wrote with an understanding. So but you and I, when we read it, we read it, we start from chapter 1, we understand this is an angel. But as for him, when it happened, because he had not yet written it and fully understood it, it's just happening like that. And when it was done, he began to write. One must never pray to an angel. Angels know, and they were there, when Lucifer, or rather Satan, was cast out from, or rather out of heaven. And they don't want to be like Lucifer. That's why they don't want you to pray to them. They don't want you to worship them. They don't want you to bow to them. They don't want what happened to Lucifer to happen to them. Number three, your confession. Your confession. Remember, the spirit world is controlled by words. We only materialize that which is unborn to time through our words. Hence, when you read Genesis chapter 1 and you read from verses 3, we see God saying, let there be, let there be, let there be. And that is because in the realms of the spirit, words construct, words create. So your confession can actually be the reason why you are not seeing the activities or rather the ministry of angels in your life. It's one thing to confess when you're with people and say all good things. But when you're on your own and you start saying other things, I've seen a lot of people saying good things about they themselves, rather saying good things about their lives. I am strengthened. I am prosperous. I'm not the tail. I'm the head. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No word spoken against me shall take shape. All those things when they are with people. But when they are by themselves now, they'll be saying something completely different from what they were saying when they were with people. They'll be saying things like, I'm suffering, my life is not making sense, I'm sick, uh, God doesn't care. You see, your confession, because angels move because of words. That's why a closed mouth is equal to a closed destiny. So without a word, angel does not, an angel won't move, and angels don't move. So your confession can be the one that is causing you to block your angel and away. So start working on your confession, because your confession reflects your belief system. It doesn't matter if in front of people you are saying one thing, but in private you are saying a different thing. If your confession does not match your belief system, nothing will materialize from the supernatural 
to the natural. Number four, ignorance towards the ministry of angels, or rather lack of revelation. My favorite quote, the more you know, the more you function. The less you know, the less you function. You cannot operate or travel to the direction of what you do not know. Ignorance is so dangerous that God himself said, because you have rejected knowledge in Hosea 4, I will reject you. God is not ready to be represented by anybody who is ignorant. No, no, no. He said, because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you as my priests. And what is a priest? A priest is God's representative. So God does not want to be represented by people who are operating under ignorance. So revelation now will cause you to move more and to see more of angels and to be exposed to the ministry of angels. However, the opposite is true. Ignorance now will block your angels and also will block the ministry of angels in your life. What that means is start studying. Try to understand. Read about angels. Find scriptures because between the OT and the NT, which is the Old Testament and the New Testament, we have over 400 scriptures that talks about angels, heavenly beings, and their ministry. That is too much. That is really too much. So study, read books, right? Listen, empower yourself. Because when it comes to the things of the spirit, maturity does not come from the mind. Maturity comes from the revelation you know about a particular matter. Isn't it amazing that today we know that there is Israel? But if I was to tell you that there is no Israel without an angel or the ministry of, e of angels, you'll be shocked. If Jacob did not encounter an angel, we will not be having Israel today. That was powerful. So Israel was a result of what? Of an encounter with an angel or angelic encounter. So the man was Jacob, encountered an angel. Angel changed his name to what? To Israel. So today we have Israel. We have the 12 tribes of Israel. Why? Because there was something called an angel. And before that, he had a dream where he saw angels ascending and descending. Angels are real. And I believe that you will start seeing them in your dreams. You will start seeing them even in your life. I'm talking about the natural world. When you are moving, you begin to move with them. Because God wants you to move with them. That's what God wants. Hence, the day you said yes to Jesus, he released angels. And not only that, Hebrews 12 declares that we are come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, a place of innumerable number of angels. We are not marching to Zion. We are come. And where we are is a place of innumerable number of angels. I don't really get it when somebody who was and who has been saved for 70 years and have never really had a tangible, supernatural testimony about manifestations of the supernatural, it really disturbs my spirit because that's not a life of a believer according to the Bible. We are supernatural beings. We are spiritual beings with earthly experience. When we move, heaven moves. And how does heaven move? Heaven moves through the ministry of angels.